Attention, Hut. Nick Hines, the Sarge, reporting for duty here on My Racehorse Live. And ladies and gentlemen, My Racehorse Breeders' Cup show has just begun. And I tell you what, it's going to be a big, big weekend. Breeders' Cup Championship Saturday is upon us. And uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome in our crew, our social media, all things expert, of course, Hannah Bloom, Joe Mishak, our operations manager, and of course, the one and only Joe Moran. Racing Hello. manager out Hello. here on the left coast, and uh, happy Breeders' Cup Saturday, everybody! Happy Breeders', happy Breeders Cup, we made it. Well, and again, I just want to remind the folks out there, knowing that it's Championship Saturday, a championship is on the line, and uh, as you know, uh, authentic taking center stage, going for that uh, one million dollar bonus if he were to uh, prevail in today's uh, Breeders' Cup Classic. Not only a six million dollar purse, but a one million dollar bonus. And it's all gravy. Hashtag my authentic Breeders' Cup, my authentic BC, if you will. And uh, so much happening on today's uh, docket. Essentially, we've got uh, interviews, uh, insight uh, with the crew, uh, Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert content. And of course, a look back at the history of the Breeders' Cup and also an interview that took place um, over the last week or so with uh, the great uh, Dora Delgado of Breeders' Cup fame. All right, uh, Joe, Joe, Hannah, uh, how are we feeling today? I mean, I'm feeling great. Feeling this is good. usually my... Uh, I just hope my... Uh... Go ahead, Anna. <laughs> See, we're so Sorry. excited. No, it's okay. So just a reminder to the, everyone watching, like it seems like all of our Wi-Fi is just like battling us today. So in case we're talking on top of each other, I think that is why. But no, I'm very excited. Can't believe we finally made it to Breeders Cup Saturday. Can't wait to see Authentic. He's looked fantastic all week. So I know both Joe are very excited as well. Yeah. yeah Joe, sure. Joe, Mishak, Joe Mishak, you're obviously there in the heat of it all. And, uh, you know, with Authentic and, and how well he's, he's trained and looked all week, you know, kind of hard to fathom the fact that he hasn't peaked yet. But, but I certainly get that impression based on what I've seen, uh, you know, breakfast the Breeders' Cup on TVG. He looks fantastic. Yeah, no doubt. He looks like he's jumping out of his skin. Looks like all systems are go. Um, you know, his, his last couple of works are kind of reminiscent to me uh, to his uh, work prior to the Derby. Uh, obviously, we know what happened uh, Derby Day. So, uh, yeah, I don't think he could be doing any better right now. And um, I'm super pumped to see what he has in store for us this afternoon. Hannah, in regard to the, uh, the social media aspect of things, I know that you've been uh, frontline center with uh, – you know, again, keeping us posted uh, with your social media team and, and authentic. And you've had an opportunity to look at the other contenders, but you've also had the opportunity to see authentic evolve up, up close and personal. Would you have to say that uh, this is the best you've seen him look? Oh, I have to say, yes. I mean, he looks fantastic. I was there when he, you know, shipped in or sorry, flew in from California and walking off the van. He just looked fantastic. You could not tell that he had been traveling all day he looks great his works i mean he just looks like a superstar right now looks like he's rearing to go joe moran we've got you back and uh you landed <laughs> safely in lexington and um you know again with, with authentic you had an opportunity to witness uh, his most recent works we're going to get more into this but uh what's uh in x number of words what's your thought on authentic uh, heading into the uh, championship yeah i would say it's the the best he's he's been in a while. Uh, I would say very similar when I was talking to Joe Mishak, very similar to how he was training leading up to the Derby. Uh, every work, he just goes right out, handles his business, and uh, Bob couldn't ask for anything else. So I, I think we're ready to go. All right, I love it. I love it. Well, we've had a great team out there in Lexington, uh, not only comprised of, of what you're seeing with uh, Joe, Joe and uh, Hannah. And uh, behind the scenes, uh, Throughout the week, uh, from the point which he landed, let's uh, take a look. All things authentic here. The Breeders' Cup show brought to you by My Racehorse. It's all about authentic, ladies and gentlemen. We just arrived here at uh, Keeneland, Lexington, Kentucky, where the Breeders' Cup's gonna be held. Shipped in well.
authentic, what he'll do is go to the track tomorrow, he'll gallop. You want to see the energy level. He's putting out the vibes to me that he is just sitting on another big race. I mean, he's ready to roll right now. Game time is coming. He's ready. Well, that was a uh, little snippet of uh, authentic and, of course, uh, the anticipation uh, with a horse that's uh, getting ready for uh, game day. And now that the game day is upon us, and as we alluded to the fact that, again, Bob Baffert, the all-time winningest uh, Breeders' Cup Classic trainer, having won three when he was able to assemble three in a row, which consisted of Bayern, American Pharaoh, your Triple Crown winner, which culminated the Grand Slam and the Breeders' Cup Classic and the late great uh, Arrogate. Hannah, I know you've been lucky enough to spend the uh, week in uh, Lexington on the heels of uh, a World Series run, I might add. But uh, tell us what it's been like. I mean, obviously, up close and personal, knowing your your affiliation with uh, Authentic and the My Racehorse group, how has it been for you? And, uh, you know, knowing your travels with Midnight Bisu, how is this different or is it? Uh, it, like I said earlier, I think I, I'm honored to be just here in the presence of him. I'm starstruck, too, because I've seen him race, you know, in person, but I've never been as close to see him, like, right next to me, so to speak, you know, and watching him back time and watching him head to the track for watching him work in person. You know, just the other day when he was working, it was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. It's I was telling the people I work with, it was so unfortunate because on Tuesday when he worked or on Wednesday, I forget which day was his first day here. I like positioned myself right next to Jimmy Barnes to go watch him work. And right as he was turning the corner, these like two ponies stuck right in front of us. So I missed like half of his work, but you know, still, like I said, I'm starstruck when I'm around him. He just tr quite an athlete and he looks fantastic leading into today's big race. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, based on, uh, you know, the videos that, that I've seen and of course uh, provided uh, by my racehorse throughout the uh, week, you know, it's pretty amazing to, think that you've got a horse that was a Kentucky Derby winner, mind you, in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, with this year being pushed back, that this horse potentially could be uh, peaking at, at the right time. Uh, Hannah, remind us uh, of that hashtag for the uh, fans and uh, partners out there where they would uh, submit those. Yes. So as you can see, it's rolling on the screen right now. Hashtag my authentic BC. I've been drilling this into everyone's head for weeks now. So um, please don't let me down. Keep using the hashtag. I know I will. And we want to see you celebrate. So specifically today, please film yourself watching the race or have someone else film you. We want to see those reactions and see how you're celebrating beforehand. Yeah, I absolutely, uh, I, I've enjoyed, uh, again, with the commercials that have run on TVG, we've had an opportunity to uh, watch the the partners, uh, you know, front and impersonal as far as the parties that they've had. And, you know, so if you have parties out there and you're getting uh, your family together, your family and friends, and you've assembled because of in light of the year, yet not having the opportunity to be out at the racetrack, uh, tell us how you're celebrating and be sure to uh, send it in. Of course, that the hashtag ever so important, hashtag my authentic BC, as you can see there, at the, uh, the bottom of the screen. All right, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, I believe it was last week, in fact, we had uh, Dora Delgado. She is the Executive Vice President and Chief Racing Officer at the, uh, the Breeders' Cup. Uh, she joined us, uh, the uh, My Racehorse team, for our live show. Let's uh, check in with Dora Delgado in that interview. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a a mad drive over the course of the, the next eight days uh, for sure. So a salute to you and, and the work that you do. And, you know, in your, I guess, best means of coming up with an answer, what makes uh, the Breeders' Cup so prestigious? I mean, we obviously know it's a world championship, but what makes it uh, so prestigious? And at the end of the day, uh, a Super Bowl, if you will. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the difference in between the Breeders' Cup World Championships and many events worldwide is that we're a, a non-invitational event. 
So unless you've won a win in your in um, challenge race where you're, you you basically get a golden ticket to run, um, all everybody else has to pay entry fees. They have to travel. They have to get here. It's it's very expensive. Um, so when you make a commitment to run in the world championships, you are you're making a definitive statement about the quality of your horse. So that right there has elevated the races beyond, you know, a normal ship in and run at your local track for a stake. It, it attracts that world class competition. Number one, because it's thirty one million dollars in purses and awards, which you're just not going to find that many places. And number two, we've we've spent um, the last decade making sure that it's a, a must see event, that it's a an experience that 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 has to be best in class for our owners, trainers, breeders, and those um, connections that travel here to the event. So we've done a lot of enhanced experiences around the event. Unfortunately, this year's not gonna be a great example of that due to the restrictions in place, but we're hoping that you know we can get that back on track at Del Mar. But, but having that added, um, those added experiences for our uh, Breeders' Cup owners and trainers, they really appreciate it. They, you know, it's almost like a, you know, like a, a reunion of sorts because they see each other sometimes only once a year and it's at the Breeders' Cup. So they, the social aspect of it, of seeing other owners that mm -hmm. have these kind of, of runners is is amazing. And they, they really enjoy the opportunity to get together, um, compete against each other and see who's the best. Yeah, I, I think it's just a it's tremendous cross fiber of, of personalities to boot. I mean, not only the horses, on the racetrack, uh, but you know, now that it's a, a two day event, essentially since that has taken place, you know, there were some that kind of argued the point, hey, just make it a one day thing. But, you know, knowing that it is global, the fact that uh, you're wanting to include as many as you can and give them the opportunity, I, I think a two day event is a, a tremendous thing. Uh, that All right, so that was the uh, the interview with uh, Dora Delgado. I'm not sure what uh, happened right at the, uh, the end of that, but uh, at any event, in any event, we uh, also had an opportunity over this uh, last week and last few days to get uh, acquainted, reacquainted with uh, Hall of Fame jockey Johnny Velasquez, who will be uh, aboard uh, Authentic for today's Breeders' Cup Classic. Well, I think between the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness, you know, I've been saying kind of quite a bit that, you know, that he, he ran a very good race in the Preakness, but he did not run, he did not run the same race that he ran in, in the Kentucky Derby, you know, uh, two, two different tracks, two different uh, shadows in the racetracks, and every pole that he passed, he, you know, he kind of slowed down, he was not really as aggressive like he was in the in the Kentucky Derby and every hole that he went and every shadow that he passed, he slowed down, not really paying attention. And then finally when the Philly got through, you know, I tried to go with her and, and he was kind of hesitant to go. Um, but at the same time, like he went with her, but not as aggressive like he was in the Kentucky Derby. And, and that's the way he ran the whole way in the bigness, you know, he, he ran a great race. I mean, they run fast, they run everything, but I just think that he, he never give me the, his all, you know, like he, he was in there uh, 100% mentally, you know, he just, he was paying attention more to the, to the grounds and to the shadows and stuff like that than, than actually uh, running the race. So hopefully, you know, we have a, we, we get a, a really good clear day here or a cloudy day where we don't have, get all these shadows from the poles <laughs> and he pays attention to the race and, uh, and, and do what he did at the Derby. You know, it's like, I think he, he get to see a lot of things, um, that he gets distracted very easily, and then and it kind of happens. I mean, we we have seen it in the past what he's done in Santa Anita and the things he's done. You know, the talking in or talking out, and he's done things like that. But he's, I think if he just put his mind in and the business of what he needs to do, he'll be he really tough. You know. Well, obviously, it's a, the the big leagues, like we call it. You know, it's our. Olympics, if you will, you know, we, we have people from all over, you know, we have Europeans from all of Europe, you know, they come here, the best horses from Europe, the best jockeys, trainers, you know, and then meet all the people here in the United States, you know, from all, all over the States and in, in the United States. So it's not an Olympics, so it's so the, the big leagues for us. So, you know, so it's definitely the biggest deal for, for American racing or even for the European racing as well.
Well, I'm pretty lucky and pretty blessed that I, you know, I've been uh, around for a little while <laughs> and I'm kind of used to these things, that, you know, these, these competitions that we do. And, uh, you know, I've been blessed enough that I travel, you know, a lot through the States and, and, and Europe as well and uh, even Asia. Uh, but yeah, you know, you got to learn, you know, the competition. You learn, you know, the horses that you are uh, against, you, and, you know, the jockeys as well. Um, but, you know, it's funny because I always say it's like it's always better riding these kind of races, that really important races, because you get the best riders, the best horses, and, and, and it makes it a lot easier riding with that. But, you know, in everyday business, you know, you, sometimes you get the jockeys that, you know, that they don't really pay attention and they don't do their homework and, you know, they, they kind of mess you up uh, the race a lot easier. Uh, then this this kind of this this kind of uh, big race with big big days like like we have for the Breeders' Cup, uh, you got the best riders riding and they, they got to do the, the best work and and I, sometimes it's a lot easier, yeah. Oh my God, I mean, see, everyone every one of them counts. You know, they're very uh, the, the emotions are, are very different from every race. Uh, I, I but I always have to say that you know winning my first one the you know, that house 1998, what makes me who I am right now and kind of opened the doors for me to, you know, to be the, to have the career that I have so far. Um, definitely are one of those, you have to mention the house. It's just no, no, no other way to say it. I mean, everyone else after the house, is, it, it was because of him and, and opened up the door. So um, very, uh, very lucky, very blessed. Well, on the main track, I have to say the dirt track, we have a long stretch, you know, and it's, it's a quarter of a mile stretch. So you have to be careful how much you want to use the uh, your horse in the first part of the race because you, you, you want to, you know, say the best you can. Then again, we have to see how the track is going to be playing that day or even, every, even race by race. So you have to kind of adjust that as well. Then you go to the grass, the grass, uh, the tight turns, quick turns and on on Keeneland. so those things that you have to play and hopefully your horses can handle those quick turns uh they're pretty tight and then again but we still have a long stretch and the stretch in Keeneland seems to go uphill a little bit from the eight ball to the wire so also you want to kind of manage that but you, you, you don't want to you know use too much of your horse the first part of the race or a little too early that you know it's going to cost you the last of a mile so those things you have to be aware of i mean i've been very lucky that i've been here uh, in Kentucky uh, many times uh, in the spring and, sp and the fall, so I get to know the track very well. And, and again, very lucky that I travel so much in the state, so you get to see all those stuff. So you, you learn a lot from from the, from the times that you, that you are different places and, and, and learn about the tracks. Uh, it's always <laughs> pressure. <laughs> it's always pressure. Doesn't matter what it is. But you know what? We have to enjoy this. Here's the people who are, you know, coming in new, most of the people new to, uh, to the business and having the opportunity to be part of the big day like this one. Hey, listen, we have to give it to them and, and, and we have to thank them, you know, to be part of it. Hall of Fame writer Johnny Velasquez, of course, uh, catching up with, with our team. And it's pretty remarkable to think. The fact that uh, he's won 15 Breeders' Cup races, including uh, five Triple Crown races, when you consider the fact that uh, he has not won a, uh, a Breeders' Cup Classic, uh, could very well be the first time, and we're anticipating just that with uh, Authentic here on Breeders' Cup World Championship Saturday. So along with trying to earn purse money, our objective is to try and go out and cash a gamble. And I want to bring back in uh, Joe Moran. I know that... Uh, you know, we've had an opportunity between the sheets, ragazins, thoroughgraphs, workout reports, video replays. At the end of the day, when you look at the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic, knowing the success Bob Baffert has had being the winning as a trainer in this particular race, the fact that he has 30% of the field, how do you think Authentic stacks up in the, uh, the scheme of things here? Oh, I, I think he has a, a big shot. Um, obviously, to me, I feel... Bob's going to, I think Bob's going to win this race regardless. Um, I, I think he has three big live shots here, obviously, and probable maximum security and authentic all are, are logical choices here. Um, but, you know, I, I've really dug into this race and, and I think authentic uh, has a big shot here. And I think the key is he is the speed of the speed. Uh, a lot of people were, you know, saying he's going to get pressure in this race. 
But I think I think he's going to be the fastest. And and I was talking with Joe Mishak yesterday. I think it takes other horses more out of their game to try to go with him um, because he's so quick early in that ha- that half mile split. I look back at the Derby when he posted that forty six and two split. Uh, I was worried. And when that split came up at the board, I was sitting there and saying, uh-oh, is this too fast? But uh, he just seems to strive when he does that. So, you know, I, I think he's ultra live in this spot. Hopefully we get a clean break and uh, find ourselves on the lead. Yeah, I think obviously the break break is the key because you've got yeah. a horse like Maximum Security that's, that's uh, directly next to him. And, yeah. you know, Improbable is more of a, a tactical horse. But I do think of yeah. the Baffert three. Uh, I think, as we all know, Authentic is a free-running type and uh, has that high cruising speed. All right, Uh, you and I have spent numerous days at the racetrack together, and we've had some big days and not so big days. (laughs) One particular bet that I know that you've had success with uh, are your trifectas. So I know that you assembled a wager for the uh, the Breeders' Cup Classic and all things authentic and not necessarily being a homer because I think you and I are the same ilk in a sense that you've got a late developing three-year-old that appears to be getting better. So – what was your approach here on this trifecta? Yeah, so uh, I'm keying uh, authentic on top, um, playing all in on him. Obviously a little biased, but like I said, on, on raggies on sheets, when you really break it down, he's got a big, big shot in this race. Um, underneath, I'm going to use by my standards, he's been a horse that uh, really has got sharp this year. He's consistent. He shows up. He's tactical. Uh, so I think he's going to be involved. Uh, maybe, you know, hit, hitting second might be a little wishful thinking for me, but I, I think he has a shot. He's been a horse I've been a fan of for a while. Tom Zeta Tot, he had a terrible start last time. Uh, another horse on sheets. He's got a winning shot in this race, but I'm going to play him underneath. Uh, and then I'm going to stay logical with the two other Bafferts and probable maximum security. And then for the third spot, um, I'll have a couple prices in there. I'll also throw in uh, Tacitus. He's a horse that Kind of has been a, I don't want to say a disappointment horse because he's made almost $3 million, but, um, you know, he's a horse that looks phenomenal. I've seen him in the, the breakfast with the Breeders' Cup. He looks great. He's a horse that shows up every time and, and tries. Uh, you know he's going to handle the distance, so he's one I'll use underneath at a price. And then Global Campaign, he's a horse that, you know, recency, recency you're going to think he's going to show speed. I don't think he's fast enough to go, but you look back at his uh, previous form as a three-year-old, uh, and he was successful sitting right off the pace. So that's another horse I'm going to throw in there as a price for third. Yeah, I definitely think that uh, you got a couple of bombers that potentially could sneak their way into the exotics. Well, yeah. I'm like you, and although I am more of a superstar effective player, I am going to use authentic as the key horse. And no, not being a homer, being a person that feels that a horse is peaking, that hasn't peaked and essentially gone to the other side of the ridge. So essentially what I did was the wise guy horse all week long has been Tom's the top, but in, in good reason. I mean, obviously this is a horse when you look at his form and what he's been able to accomplish, you know, Jarrell Rosario for all intents and purposes is undefeated on him if it weren't for the poor break blast out, but you have to appreciate what uh, Al Stahl has done with Tom's the top in his career. He is a seven year old. He would be the oldest horse to win the, uh, the Breeders' Cup Classic but he's not going to win it this year. While at the same time, Bob Baffert, who's the winningest trainer, all three horses that he won the Breeders' Cup Classic with with, with were three-year-olds. So for me, obviously using uh, Tom's the top under, along with uh, Improbable, who is a horse that continues to train forwardly, and Tis the Law. I think Tis the Law is genuine. I think he's going to be forwardly placed. I don't have that much concern with the inside draw because he has enough speed, I think, to, to get himself in a position. But the one horse that I think could offer up some bang for your buck looking at sheet numbers and his style is title ready for Dallas Stewart. He's been known to, uh, you know, pop some upsets along the way. And his horses seemingly outrun their odds in races like this. So in order to make that vertical play work for you and myself, uh, Joe, as you know, we're going to need some price uh, help underneath. So superstar effective for me. And it's a, a, a trifecta for Joe Moran. Joe, let's get lucky. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you made a good point about title ready. Actually, I, I was really, I kind of was going back, back and forth between him and global campaign. And you look at title ready along with his numbers, uh, his, his track record uh, speaks for itself at Keeneland. So that always helps. Uh, I'm a big horse for course type of uh, player. So uh, I would not be surprised using him underneath for sure. Yeah. My question for you, Joe, real quick. And obviously we're going to get into a, another segment uh, where our uh, team caught up with uh, hall of fame trainer, Bob Baffert. Yeah. But, um, for Authentic to win this race, does he need to be on the lead? 
Yeah, it, it's a tough thing. I, I, I don't think the answer is yes, but I, I would like to see him. I think it's going to ultimately give him the best shot to win. I, I, I just think he's that horse. He, he really almost takes a deep breath when he gets on the lead. And, and you know, it's, it's kind of a weird thing to say because maybe he's going to go faster. But a horse like him, you see him train in the morning. He wants to go. He's like that, uh, like a spring. You know, he's locked up and he just wants to, to go. So uh, I'm hoping to see him on the lead. I think it ultimately gives him the best shot to win. So to answer your question, I would say yes. All right. Now, I think the fact that uh, Johnny Velazquez is, is seeking his first ever Breeders' Cup Classic and you know, for the records that he's been able to accomplish throughout his career, um, I think it's time. I think yeah. Johnny Velasquez is ultimately due to win this particular race for his lifelong accomplishments. All right, well, let's jump into the uh, the interview with our, our Hall of Fame trainer, Bob Baffert. But I first wanted to uh, check in with um, Joe Mishak. Joe Mishak, in reference to uh, Bob, I know that you had an opportunity to, to catch up with him out there at Keeneland. And uh, what's the, the vibe and, and what's the anticipation? Yeah, I mean, we, we've kind of talked a lot about it already, so kind of steal some of the thunder. But uh, obviously, uh, after his last workout uh, at Santa Anita, he just said, put this guy in bubble wrap and get him over there, right? Um, he's, he's doing everything we need him to do. Um, he's looking great. Let's just get him, get him there, see how he responds to the track. Obviously, uh, as Bob says, you know, he, he has, you know, floated over the Keeneland uh, surface. That's always a positive to see your horse take to a, a new surface. Obviously, though, we didn't have much concern about that. Obviously, this horse has raced all over the country, uh, numerous you know tracks all over the place. So it seems like he's very uh, flexible in, in where he needs to go. And um, I mean, it's just a deep field, right? I mean, I don't recall Nick uh, a Breeders' Cup Classic that, that had this much quality, in my opinion, in recent years. Well, I had the I had the conversation in reference to. Uh, uh, the classic because of the fact that this whole year was thrown off kilter brought to you by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. But because of the pushback to the Kentucky Derby, I think it enabled these horses and the trainers of these horses and the connections essentially to kind of kind of buy their time with develop as opposed to trying to get into the starting gate the first Saturday in May. And uh, a lot of what they had done was saturated. So the, the three-year-olds, I personally think that people are going to have a greater respect for them uh, at the end of today. Yep, no doubt. It's um, it's going to be a fun race. I can't see. Improbable has been great as a four-year-old, but we know he's a little bit, he can be a little bit quirky, especially coming out of the starting gate. So um, we've seen him, we've seen him lose races at the starting gate, obviously, that he was heavily favored in. So um, it's just, uh, you know, Bob's kind of got, you know, we alluded to the embarrassment of riches. And, uh, I, you know, we're just hoping for a, a good break um, and see where the chips fall. And uh, I know it's going to be exciting coming down the stretch. I know that for sure. Yeah. All right. Let's check in with that interview. He's actually becoming a pretty seasoned horse, you know, chipping back and forth and everything. And um, came off a van full of himself. He's, he's, he's always been like a spring-loaded uh, horse anyway. But he's got a lot of energy and um, took him to the track on Wednesday morning. Just felt great. And then the beauty of it, this cold air really, you know, these California horses are just thriving on it. And I uh, took him to the track today and he just looked, he was just full of himself. So I brought him to the paddock and right away he had to scream a little bit just to let the other horses know that, you know, he's in, he's in the locker room, you know. But uh, that's him. He's got a... He's got a funny personality, and uh, he, but he's on his toes. He's ready to roll. His his weapon is his speed, and I, I would like to have seen him on the lead by himself, and I think it would have been better for him. He lost focus. He does. If you shut him down, he loses focus. He gets to looking around. He was looking at the shadows on the backside. There was shadow of the sun. He was like hesitating. He wouldn't go. And but that's what he does. He did that in the San Anita Derby. He got he lost focus. He did that in the. Uh, in the Haskell, when Mike shut him down, he didn't want to go again, look, and he almost got beat. He will do that. You want to get them where they're comfortable, and, they, and if you get them in a nice groove, they breathe better, they relax, and, and as long as you get them put run on his mind and keep it on his mind, you know, he just goes and goes and goes. Well, you know, having all these owners involved, I think it makes it more exciting uh, because not only when you watch the horse that day, that you get nervous. We, you, you feel the same emotions that we're we're feeling, and I don't even own the horse, but the, you 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 feel that the, the tension, the, the the nervousness, the excitement, and then 
during the race, you're hanging on every moment watching this horse. You're just, it builds up as they turn for home. And then when they actually win, the excitement uh, that we feel, and now everybody else is part of it. And that's what makes it exciting for all the, these owners. And, uh, and it, it's a great idea that this, they, they, they did this and brought everybody in. We've got, I have friends, my wife's uh, family are in it, and they, they were so excited. They got their win pictures, their bragging rights. And, and that's what the beauty of the sport, you know, and not only that, you know, you're, you're rooting for a noble, beautiful horse and, and authentic. He is just a, he's just a fast horse. And he is, he, like I said, he's, he's exciting to watch run because he's so fast. I really couldn't be happier. He's coming into this race like he came into the Derby, maybe better. And, and, but he's going to need to, you know, if he just runs that, if he runs his Derby race back, you know, he, he could, he could pull it off. So, um, I, I, there's no reason why he can't. So, um, but right now, I feel really great about him. You're uh, muted. <clears throat> Nick? <laughs> Sarge, you're muted. I think uh, the Sarge is a little bit... Uh frozen at the moment as well so we'll yeah uh, no he's he's kick off there, but he's a great interview excellent interview with your hall of fame trainer unprecedented of course uh, when he did win that uh, third breeders cup classic with uh, the late great to uh, arrogate but you know i guess peaking at the right time is, is key right i mean we are sitting in the top of uh, november and it's been quite a year but uh, as mentioned with mishak you know as we were discussing the fact that the year actually got pushed back may have been uh, the ultimate blessing for this horse. Without a doubt, I know when, you know, he got beaten the San Anita Derby uh, by Honor AP, a lot of people were ready to, ready to, you know, dismiss him, ready to go. I said, listen, you know, this is a horse that obviously has his quirks. Time's only going to be his best friend. Uh, he got better. He still had his quirks, as Bob says, uh, and he still, you know, has them some days, but I think he's, Bob's done a fantastic job in, in working them out. And, um, you know, we were, we were, the beneficiary of a later derby this year and uh, a horse that I did think would peak in, in the fall and um, hope, hope, hope we're right today. Moran, obviously you've got a horse here that has incredible consistency, you know, seven starts, five wins, two seconds. And in the two races that uh, he got beat, uh, you can make the argument that the Swiss skydiver kind of beat him to the path there uh, along the backstretch. And even going back to the Santa Anita Derby, when he took a right-hand turn, due to the fact that he does have those idiosyncrasies. But, you know, again, for a horse that's as consistent as he is to be six to one in the morning line, I would have to say that that might be a, a gift horse uh, in the mouth. So um, I know that uh, we've got so many things to look forward to, but, uh, and I know that we're already in the spirit and the magic of the, uh, the Breeders' Cup Championship, but uh, here is a video that certainly uh, gets and pulls at the heartstrings every time. Enjoy. The legend was born in the early 80s when breeder John Gaines formulated an audacious plan. Mr. Gaines had a grand vision. John Gaines saw the light. A multi-million dollar day of championships showcasing American racing to a global audience. With the help of his friends, Gaines' idea would become known as the Breeders' Cup. Fast forward to 1984. Dallas was the number one TV show. There was Reagan, the Rubik's Cube, and a recording artist from Minneapolis who ruled both the box office and the music charts. I love when doves cry. But on November 10th, a landmark event of the 80s was to take place at Hollywood Park. That first Breeders' Cup was full of excitement. The stands were packed. The racing was unbelievable. Bringing together the greatest talents in the game, the Breeders' Cup was born. And it was the classic that day that would set the tone for the next quarter century. And they're off in the Breeders' Cup Classic. It was wild again, and they were coming down the stretch of Hollywood Park. And a dramatic finish. Wild again does it. That day, give us that cheer again. We all knew this was big. Over the next 24 years, the Breeders' Cup would establish itself as horse racing's Olympic Games. Epic showdowns playing themselves out at North America's most storied racetracks. Two Derby winners hit the wire together. What a day for trainer Richard Mandela. Was it three and a half or 
was it for he won this afternoon? We officially started calling him the Pope on that day. A huge upset looming here. Here is our king to win it in an absolute shocker. Everybody said at the same time, who in the hell was that? Flanders, Serena's song. Flanders looks like she got her nostril on the wire. Easy goer is set down and he's put to a fierce drive. It's on this island, I need to go at Joe Fred and Muhammad Ali. Sunday silence surges to the front. Easy goer. Sunday silence holds on. Willie Collins is there. First of the lesson, a dramatic finish, and here is the wire. But there's just been so many super moments. From the inaugural running in 84 was celebrated names like Day, Whittingham, and Phipps. To the 25th running at Santa Anita in 2008 where a new generation of horsemen will shine. Right what a 25 years. The legend continues. The legend continues. The legend continues. The legend continues. And indeed, uh, as that uh, promo, of course, uh, brought to you back in 2008 for the 25th uh, silver anniversary, if you will, as we march into the 37th year. That video I could watch over and over and over again, reflecting on uh, the memories of Christmas past. And I will tell you, uh, Joe Mishak, Hannah, those moments are, are those that hopefully we can encapsulate uh, with uh, today's championship of Authentic. And of course, uh, summing it up, the experience has been truly authentic in those uh, nine letters. But, uh, Joe, uh, obviously it's been uh, kind of a wild ride and a wild week and know that you've had your, your hands full. What are your last thoughts as we march into uh, today's classic event? I mean, I just get goosebumps watching that video. And, uh, obviously, we know we're a highlight reel for the Kentucky Derby forever. And I sure as heck would like to make it a highlight reel for the authentic owners for the Breeders' Cup forever. So I just can't wait to the race to get, to get going. Like Absolutely. It's, it's the Grand Slam. And uh, speaking of Grand Slam, <laughs> our social media expert, uh, Hannah, remind the folks out there one more time as they may be celebrating, whether it be in Kentucky, it could be California, it could be in a whole different country. I know we've got partners that are as far as New Zealand. What do they need to do to submit uh, for an opportunity? Yeah, to keep using that hashtag MyAuthenticBC on all social media platforms, specifically too, we want to see your reactions during the race, um, you know, set up your phone, have someone else record you. We want to see it all, even if you're celebrating with a mimosa this morning, you know, tag us and we'd love to see everyone celebrating everything My Authentic BC. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, salute uh, each and every one of you out there for tuning in today on uh, today's special uh, Breeders' Cup show. Joe Moran, Hannah, on behalf of Joe Mishak, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, and again, we're looking forward to a, a championship run today with my authentic. And of course, if he wins, he will be crowned your horse of the year. Rest be assured. Enjoy the rest of the day. And until next time, we'll see you in the winter circle. Good luck.